Today we're going to be looking at wearing a continuous glucose monitor. I've been wearing it on my arm now for about a week. Three, two, one. Oh. And we're going to be specifically looking at two days of intermittent-ish fasting. To answer this question of why should I be wearing a continuous glucose monitor, I'm going to turn to some experts in the field. I myself have got a degree in sport and exercise science, but when it comes to exercise physiology, human physiology, I'm going to defer to some doctors. On the Zoe blog, there's an article that's been proofread by Dr. Tim Spector, and it's entitled, What is Metabolic Health? They say, it's important to avoid these big spikes because they can contribute to the unfavorable long-term impact of food and your health. There's another company called Levels. So they've talked about inflammation, blood vessel damage, increased risk of diabetes, and weight gain. They also say that the data shows that big spikes and dips in glucose are more damaging to tissues than elevated but stable glucose. So all of this rolls up into the fact that you don't want to have wildly gyrating blood glucose levels. What is good is a, a small spike and then a, a return to baseline. What you don't want is a massive spike or like a really prolonged time followed by kind of ups and downs. Wow. <laughs> so what we're looking to do is to basically inform our diets and our uh, exercise patterns and habits and even the time with which we eat our foods so that these spikes are short-lived and moderate in nature. The type of eating that I do loosely follows an intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating model. But that's not to say that nothing goes in my mouth in the morning. So when I wake up, I go outside and I get a black coffee in the morning and I ensure that I get some morning sunlight as well. Morning sunlight, very important for setting the circadian rhythm. We've got a vlog on that that you can see in the channel. And then what I have also started doing is having some, some protein in the morning. I aim for about a gram of protein per pound in body weight and I'm about 180 pounds. So if you don't have any first thing, it's actually pretty hard to make that goal over the course of a whole day. And I also blend in a bit of mud water as well. It's got some, some mushrooms and stuff in here which are good for health. So let's walk through it. So on day one, I went outside around 8.30 and had my black coffee. I then came back inside and I had my protein shake. And you can see that none of this had any effect whatsoever on my blood sugar levels, which is great. And I had a really productive time working at home. So I tend to have breakfast around 11.30. I had a yogurt with some nuts and some berries and some seeds. Uh, and then I go straight out and I have another coffee and I typically have either um, an oat flat white or an almond cortado. This is where I start to have a bit of a blood sugar spike. So you can see here that I've got a bit of a double peak. So on this particular day, I, I had my yogurt and then I had my flat white and I actually did some, some walking in between. And it's probably that walking that's responsible for pressing down on that hump. And I was really interested to see just what would happen if I ate a lot for dinner. So I, I had this meal from All Plants, which is a, a coconut and ginger curry. It's got cauliflower in it, it's got chickpeas in it. But I also added loads of chicken, like a massive chicken breast, and then also three bits of toast. And the reason why I did this was just to see what kind of an effect it has. And you can see it did have a pretty big effect on my blood sugar levels, but it came down quickly. And because I ate early, around six o'clock, things were stable in time for bedtime. I will say I did feel absolutely exhausted after this meal though, and that could well be the consequence of just having a big spike. Day two was, was very much the same. If anything, the first part of the day was a bit flatter. Instead of having an oat flat white, I had an almond cortado. I hear that almond milk has a little bit less sugar in it than the oat milk, so maybe that's why I had a less pronounced lunchtime spike. I don't really like to have any coffee after 12 uh, because after then I feel like it might start interfering with my sleep a little bit because the half-life of caffeine I believe is around six to eight hours. 
Now on this particular day, I went to the, the gym before dinner and then after dinner I had a load of sushi and then I walked for a long time as well and I honestly thought that when I got home, everything would be pretty much plain sailing. And in actual fact, what happened was that everything was kind of plain sailing during the time that I was walking, but when I got home, I then had a delayed spike and I will say that I felt quite full still. So I think the reason for this spike, which happened around 8.30, which is a tiny bit late for my liking, is the reason was I just ate too much. And what I've observed over the rest of the week is that most of my fluctuations, most of my big fluctuations in blood sugar levels are due to the fact that I have an ability to probably eat too much. These modest meals really have no effect for me, no sizable effect for me, whatever. But when I, when I pig out essentially and maybe have one more serving than I should do, that for me seems to cause the biggest spikes. In general, I'm, I'm very happy with my results. And you can see here that they're, if you go in the app, they've got a really great a really great feature called daily patterns where they do your averages. You can see that the mornings are quite a lot flatter and most of my variation happens of an evening or after lunch when I'm eating. But the other good news is that things really level out in time for bed. So all in all, I'm very happy with my results and my eating patterns in general. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, please like and subscribe. Earthy 30 is a challenge that helps you eat 30 different plant-based foods each week. Now, we don't say you have to be a vegan or a vegetarian. You can have meat, you can have fish. That's all good. In fact, we recommend it in order to get your protein. But what we like to do is get this diversity of plant-based foods as well. You can go to the challenge page on the website and you can download your scorecard. Every week you tick the boxes for the foods that you've eaten. When you get to level two, we also ask you to add in 10 minutes of sunlight every day and also 30 minutes exercise or 10,000 steps a day. You can see that right now I am on level two and so far this week I've eaten 24 different plant-based foods. That's it from me, see you next time.